Oh, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Shine and today we're going over the fast rise of Trippy Red and what makes him and his brand so special. And you can thank this video on Marcellus who said I should do a video on Trippy Red and Chris Benjamin who also said, yeah, I barely get how he just seemingly came out of nowhere. Let's start right there with the mysterious rise of Trippy Red. So I'm not gonna bang y'all's heads with facts that y'all can find in other videos. Just know the dude went from Canton, Ohio and he moved to Atlanta where he soon met Cody Shane and Lil Wop. Both of them have already made some ground in the music business as artists. And as a matter of fact, Lil Wop is famous Dex's blood cousin. And I've already discussed in past videos when you connect with people who've already made ground and it allows you to skip steps in the same way Lil Pump has done with Smoke Perk. Connections mean a lot in this business. I mean, if you watch his interviews, he often talks about flying from Canton to Atlanta to LA back to Atlanta. Bro, ain't gonna just be doing that by himself, right? But while Cody Shane and especially Lil Wap plays a significant role in the advancement of Trippy Red, Trippy Red seemingly coming out of nowhere can really be attributed to a traditional marketing campaign. Now let me give you some context. That boy Trippy Red is signed by Strange Entertainment. Strange Entertainment is owned by Elliot Grange, Lucian Grange's son. Lucian Grange is the CEO of Universal Music Group. Inner Scope, I believe, Cash Money, Def Jam, so many record labels that you know are under it. And again, Trippy is signed to this dude's son. So they got a few resources, you know what I'm saying? And outside of all the songs that Trippy Red had already been doing and building that organic clout with his collaborations over the past year, they basically had a traditional project release strategy, dropping polls back in April, which is featuring 6ix9ine, love that song. And then the project dropped a month later in May. You guys already know how much I love project release strategies. I've already talked about so many of the benefits before. I don't have time here. If you haven't seen what I said about project release strategies, check it out here. It's gonna be somewhere. Just know that the biggest benefit is that people get to discover one track that they like about you and then find out, oh my God, it's a whole project. What happens next? In April, they start lighting up the interweb with videos. They drop the video on Worldstar, Pitches and Planes, and the Fuck Them YouTube page. Now, trust me when I say this, music videos don't get up on those pages, especially Worldstar, without somebody paying some money. Now that's those resources I was talking about. And then he had a traditional media run. He was on No Jumper, DJ Small Eyes, Rap Genius, got on Noisy a few days ago. That's those connections. So the nip this part in the bud for Chris Benjamin and others who feel Trippy Red seemingly came out of nowhere. Of course, he didn't actually come out of nowhere. Some people have been following him for over a year, but the vast majority of people have only known about him for a few few months and that's because of the marketing scheme lightly led by the label and whoever the investors and backers are where they said we're gonna release a single that has a video in April release the project in May in June drop a few more videos and from there on we're gonna use our connections to get these placements in certain media outlets and get interviews articles written up all that stuff now another thing outside their traditional marketing that actually brought Trippy Red a lot of attention is his copycat style or at least that's what people have said about his style comparing it to Lil Uzi Verts. Of course just got the internet brewing people start to try to create some sort of beef. Ultimately it seems that they're both cool but honestly when I heard Trippy Red the first time I didn't hear Lil Uzi Vert. Now Trippy Red did say they kind of have a similar cadence. To me Trippy Red sounds like if Sway Lee rapped Young Thug style. But hey am I tripping y'all? Let me know if y'all gonna hear the Young Thug Sway Lee comparison. If you do I'm gonna go ahead and brand that because I said that first. Speaking of his music the dude is the Diverse. He's actually really good at drastically different styles. He's really made a point consistently of saying he wants to make great music, he wants to win Grammys, he takes his artistry very seriously. Considering his true diversity of style and the fact that he's really taking his music seriously, I think he's gonna have a lot more staying power than a lot of these other artists that might be out there. Let's just throw Little Pump's name out there. I haven't got a chance to hear the diversity from him yet, and if he doesn't have a team that's really supporting the longevity of his career and not just out to milk him for the money that he's worth right now, he might not transition too well in a few years. And not to mention Trippie Red has a method that actually 
may increase the chances of him having a hit. Adam for No Jumper, you can see in that interview how he talks about being in the studio with Trippie Red and being surprised at how prepared and serious he took his studio time, which just goes back to the fact that he takes his music seriously. But Trippie Red has a method of recording, and sometimes that includes freestyle that he already put up on Instagram, and if they were super successful, he would actually create a song around it. So he's already taking a nugget of success and then creating a full song around it. I don't know how many people out there are doing that. PMB Rock is probably the closest I can think of in the past, but it's a pretty sneaky scientific way to make sure your songs are gonna be as big as possible, which isn't surprising because Trippy Red is a smart dude. Apparently he got a 4.0 all through school. At least that's what he said. I don't have any way of checking that proof, but if you watch Bruh's interviews, especially the one with Mass Appeal, you can pretty much tell that he's a smart guy. He doesn't really say anything extra smart, but if you're from any level of hood, you know what I'm talking about when I say you can tell the difference between the guys that are street and that's their only option and the guys that are on the streets because that's where they are but if they had different opportunities they're pretty damn smart up under that street persona and could have taken advantage in my opinion it's not really hard to pick up on that on trippy red now all that talking we're just now getting the brand and i'm still gonna keep it short because i feel it's pretty obvious how he really separates himself with this 14 numerology thing and then 1400 he talks about like a 14th angel and it makes it even cooler that it seems like the story is really authentic to him it relates back to his gang his street he has it on his head and he combines that of constant themes of I want to be timeless he has on his hand an infinity symbol he even puts it to the point where he talks about I can live forever and calls himself 1400 years old and refuses to say his real age now even though he said before that he's 18 years old I'm an 18 year old rapper from Canton, Ohio. But even that is a small thing that's a conversation starter and just an interesting thing to remember about him and creates these viral moments that he kind of talks about all the time. He's ready and willing to feed the viral machine at any time. You can look at moments of when he was doing the ugly guy lizard nose challenge. Homie was fierce with the Nicki Minaj challenge. Interview, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? This is how we do it. <laughs> and even his wood video went viral, which is a perfect example of one of those corny kind of jokes that smart people would make. Hey guys, smoke a wood in the woods on some wood. <laughs> I approve this message. And one last example of his willingness to feed the machine and how he understands one thing that he does can create a situation for a video to go viral. It's this video right here. Not only does he wear the mask, which brings attention, but he makes an entrance with it. Sometimes you need that dramatic effect. Well, yeah, I really mess with this dude's music and feel like he can actually do some serious damage in the future. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.